Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I am going to show you something that is a little bit crazy. You've probably seen that I've been doing some work with React lately. So what I'm going to do today is to show you how you can add little bits of interactivity to your Jinja templates in your Flask application using React style components. And this is without having to build a single page app. We are going to use a Flask application, a traditional application with pages based in templates, in HTML templates. But we are going to add little bits of interactivity, the, kind of, the kinds of things that you would normally do with jQuery, maybe with vanilla JS if you like, but now you can use the same React patterns to build this within the context of an HTML template. Here's an example that I built. This is rendered from a Jinja template. The Flask application rendered this. This is a form that has this single field here. And what I did is I converted this, this standard form field into a mini React application. This is composed by the field, the plus and the minus, and here, we can control the count using the buttons. And once we reach the limits, the buttons enable and disable as appropriate. So all of this is written with very simple logic and using the standard React patterns. If you were to build this with jQuery or with vanilla JS, it will be, in my opinion, a lot more complex to do. So what I'm going to do in the rest of the video is to show you how I built this. I actually recorded myself why I built this example. So the rest of the video is going to be that recording. Uh, if you just want to go straight to the code, then the link to the GitHub repository is down in the description. So feel free to check it out. All right, let's go ahead and build this example application. Here I have a brand new directory. There's nothing here yet. So I'm going to start by creating a template directory for the Flask application. And next I'm going to edit the two files that I need for the application, which are app.py for the code and index.html in the templates directory for the single template that we are going to need. So let's create a basic Flask application here. going to be a single route on the root URL. Here for now we are going to render the template and we need to import render template up here. So this is our first version of the Flask code. Now we can go into the template and create a basic HTML page here. We need a head section and we need a body. In the head section, we can create a title here and we can write the same thing as an H1 element in the page. And then the content of the page is going to be a form. So let's create the form. And we need a single field. This is going to be a very simple app. So I'm going to create a paragraph here. And for this, this is going to be a numeric prompt. So we are going to say, how do you rate this tutorial? As an example here. And then we are going to create the input field where the user will type the rating. So this is going to be type text. And what else can we do here? Uh, we can give it a name so that the form can then submit it to the server. The name is going to be rating. And then finally, we need a submit button. And this is going to have a value, which is what's going to appear on the button itself. So that is more or less it. Actually, the submit button should be outside of the paragraph. So this is pretty much done as a first version. So I'm going to split my terminal here into two. 
and here in the bottom part I'm going to set up the system so I'm going to start by creating a virtual environment so let's create the environment activate install flask and now we are ready to run this so I'm going to run with a development environment so that I get the debugger and I'm going to use flask run to start the application so there we go we don't really care much about this so I'm going to give more space to the text but now here we can go to localhost 5000 and hopefully we get a, an application there we go so to complete this basic version of the application we can add the submission of this form so the method is going to be post as it normally should be for all forms and then in the flask side we are going to accept methods get and post and here if our request dot method is post we are going to do something simple here because this is just an example so what we are going to do is get the rating from the request object this is going to be a variable called rating which matches the name of the field in the HTML and new rating has been received and we print the rating and we're going to leave it at that and we are once again going to render the template so that you can submit an additional rating so let's save this I'm missing an import save again and there we are so now I need to refresh the page so that we get the uh, the modified form that submits via post request so let's try again send the four and there is the uh, the variable received in the server so there we go so this is the basic flask application and now to improve this very basic field the more traditional option would be to use jQuery or something similar or maybe even vanilla JavaScript to add uh, some interactivity so what we all, we're going to do today is to use react or more specifically preact which is a react clone that is much smaller because it only copies the most important features of react and it's also designed to be embedded in a page as opposite to having a complete build that uh, normally react needs to use to convert jsx and a bunch of other things into code that can run in the browser so preact does, doesn't need any of that so let's find the preact web page right here and preact doesn't have as i said jsx it doesn't require jsx um, it uses something different and i'm going to go into the documentation into the, the getting started guide and here's the section that describes how to work without a javascript build so getting in there we learn that there's an alternative to jsx called htm and this is built by the same author of preact so both preact and htm work together so i'm going to go into htm because it's interesting that htm provides a combined version of the two libraries preact and htm uh, but from the preact side you have to import those two separately so we're going to do it from the htm side and here in the htm side we have finally an example of what we need to do so this is the command or the statement that we use to import the preact library loaded with this htm support which offers similar functionality to jsx without requiring a build so i'm going to copy this and now we are going to add this into our 
HTML template. So here at the bottom, after the form, I'm going to create a module script. This is what's going to enable me to use imports, the modern type of including scripts in JavaScript. So here we can import the two main elements in the Preact library when combined with HTM, which are HTML and render. So to begin, I'm going to just render a very simple thing. So here we can create a simple element to render. And here you are going to see that the syntax that this library uses, the HTM uses, is based on the uh, template strings in JavaScript. So I'm cre creating creating a template string and inside the string I'm going to say span creating field here let's say so this is going to be our replacement for for the rating field and then here in the rating I'm going to remove this for now and I'm going to create a placeholder element here. It's called rating. And this is going to be where we are going to render our component here. So get element by ID rating. So let's review. We have an empty span here. That is the location where we want to insert this mini React application. And then in the JavaScript side, we are using the render function from the Preact library to render this very simple component into this element that we created, the empty span element. So let's save this and make sure that this is working. So now what's gonna happen is that the field is going to go away and instead of this empty span we are going to get this message so let's refresh and of course we have a post submission warning so there we go so now we have our preact application up and running so we are already running preact so what we want to do here instead of this simple span element is to create a component so this is going to be a rating component. So we use standard React components, functional components here. And here we can return an HTML that is a little bit more interesting than the basic span placeholder that we did before. So here we can create the input field. This input was type text. It had a name of rating and what else can we do here? We can leave it like this for now and see if everything works. And then here in the render call, what we are going to do is render the rating component. Now in JSX, you will do it like this. Unfortunately, one of the main differences when you use the HTM library is the syntax here is a little bit different and it's based on template string placeholders for JavaScript. So we have to do it like this. But other than that, everything works the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to save and let's see if we now get the field. And there we go. So now we have our field. Let's add a couple of buttons to increase and decrease the number so we can have a plus button and a minus button there we go next we can add a state variable for this rating and inside the component we can create a state and let's say we start with three as a rating option and now we can set this initial value in the component. So here we can set value. And here, once again, we need to use the template 
placeholder syntax from JavaScript and we put the state right there. So let's reset this. And now we have the three in the application. So very good. Let's continue with the increment and decrement. So here we can say on click, we can call a function called incur. And for the other button, we use a decker like that. And here we can define the function. This is going to be a JavaScript event handler. So it will receive the event as an argument in both cases. We want to prevent these buttons from triggering the browser's default form submission. So prevent default and prevent default. And then here we increment the state and decrement the state. So let's refresh the page. And now we have our little counter. So this clearly works without bounds. Right now we are not checking. So let's say that we want to allow only ratings between one and five. So what we can do is to add a disabled option to both buttons. And the condition to be disabled is when value, this is the plus. So the plus should be disabled when the value reaches five. So greater than five, equal or greater than five. And then for the minus button, we are going to stop allowing it when the value is one or less. So we have an error, I guess. Let's take a quick look, see what happened. Value is not defined, of course. This is called state. Let's try again. So now when we reach five, the plus button is disabled. And now the other one. So now we are restricted to one to five. Now, the interesting thing is that none of this work changes the flask side. This form is going to be submitted in the same way. We are not creating a single page app or anything crazy. Once I submit this form, Flask receives the four that was inserted there, and then the page refreshes, it, it renders the template again, and we start from three once again, because the application is now a new instance. This is a new page, and now we start from scratch. So one more thing that we can do here to get it to its final state is to set this size to one. And let's see if that makes it, yeah, there we go. So. So now we have a really nice example of how to use React style components in a Flask application without making any major changes. And this is something that you don't even need to drop jQuery or any other thing that you use, any other library. You can incorporate this. Uh, the, the Preact library combined with HTM is about 6K bytes in size. It's actually tiny. So it doesn't really add a lot of weight to your page. So you can introduce this for little bits of interactivity in your page without having to remove jQuery or any other thing that you use. So gradually you can migrate things to this, which I think in my opinion, this is higher level. It's a little bit easier to manage when you build your interactivity components in this way. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting and I look forward to see what kinds of crazy things you build with this mix of Flask and Preact.